All right, what's up, guys? I just finished working on the uh, second part of the Emacs from Source series, and I noticed some additional annoyances I have inside of the virtual machines. You'll see uh, all we have up here in our bar. We've got our tags, which are great. Uh, we've got the title, which is fine, and then I just have this like DWM version number over here. So in this video, I'm going to be setting up DWM blocks and um, I think I'll also install a compositor because eventually, yeah, I'll probably also install a screen key. So I'm going to install a compositor and a screen key as well so that you guys can actually see my keys when I'm in the VM. And the reason I need a compositor, as you may have seen in my previous videos, is uh, that that's going to help the screen key window be uh, not totally opaque, uh, which, which will make it easier to see things underneath it when I run stuff underneath it. So I'll go ahead and hop into ST for a second. Before I actually install DWM blocks, I just want to show how we can actually set this uh, even without any special program installed. So what this is actually is the uh, the name of the root window. So we can actually set that directly with x set root. So if I do x set root dash name, uh, I'll just change it to Brent. So the essence of any bar for DWM is going to be calling x set root. Now you can call it with the C bindings or you can call it like I did just now with the um, uh, just with the shell using it, the x set root program. Uh, so I've actually written a um, a bar program like this in Perl before where I just string together a bunch of calls. So for example I could do x set root dash name Brent. How about we do this and then I can throw the date in there. So you can see now it says Brent and it also has the date. So if I wanted, I could go ahead and wrap this. So while true, do x set root dash name. Uh, let's see. Yeah, perfect. We'll just use the date again. We'll throw some quotes around it just to be safe. Uh, and then we'll also want to sleep for one second. Done. Oh, sure. I need to actually use true. So you'll see now. Uh, every second my root is being updated. Hopefully you guys can see that. I think it's big enough. Um, so that's totally something you can do. Now the benefit I'll say about DWM blocks is that um, first of all it's written in C. Uh, it seems to work very well. The problem I ran into with my Perl version, um, I think the sleeps the time it was sleeping was not very precise and I imagine that would be a problem with this with the shell kind of thing as well uh, so my time would start drifting uh, pretty quickly not not like in uh, days or weeks but like in hours the time was already off a little bit I've never noticed something like that with DWM blocks DWM blocks also provides the signal functionality so some of the things you put in your bar uh, probably don't need to update every X amount of time instead you'd like them to update uh, when when prompted basically so for example I used to have my volume for the for my laptop this uh, listed in the bar and I don't need that to be pulled every like minute um, when I'm changing it a minute would be too long and when I'm not changing it there's no reason to keep pulling it so what you can do with DWM blocks is you can set that block uh, you can associate the block with a signal uh, let me go and stop this so now you see, of course, that it won't, it'll uh, stop. Um, but what signals are, there's a really nice man page uh, in the, I think it's in man, man, SS, man pages? Yeah, so we want these Linux man pages. Uh, these are very helpful. Let's go ahead and install those, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. So signals are basically a way to communicate between processes just by sending sending each other signals. So uh, we can just kind of scroll through this. So if you've ever used kill dash nine, you're sending a signal. So once we get down to this table, you'll see the signal nine. Keep going, keep going. Sig nine is sig kill. So that means die immediately. Let's see, one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine. I guess they're not in order because uh, I know nine is kill. Um, this is the kill signal. Oh, actually, there's a different. This is the table I'm talking about. 
All right, so SIG9 is SIG kill. So if you've ever had to pro, uh, kill a program that was misbehaving using this, uh, you were sending a signal. I think you can actually say kill dash nine, like kill dash SIG kill this. Um, what you do when you hit control C is you're sending SIG int, uh, wherever that is. I think when you background something, you're sending SIG stop. And when you foreground it or resume it, you're sending SIG cont. Um, so signals are everywhere, actually, whether you know it or not. And then, yes, yeah, some of these, some of the signals are reserved for users to use. These are called the real-time signals. Um, yeah, real-time signals are distinguished by some stuff. And so, what we're going to do, if we want, I'm actually not going to set up any blocks that use signals, um, just because I don't really need it in this video. But basically, what you do. Uh, this will make a little more sense when I actually install DWM blocks. Is you can run pkill uh, dash rtmin plus some offset. So rtmin is the start of the region of signals that are reserved for the user. And then this number here uh, will be inside of your DWM blocks config file. So this means send, I think rtmin is usually like 34. Let's see if we can echo that. I think it should know what this is. RTMN. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, you can't do it like this. Um, but I think it's, it's usually around 34. It's been 34 on the systems I've checked it on. Um, but, so this will actually be signal 45, 34 plus 11. Um, and when DWM receives that signal, it'll know to update whatever block you associated it with. So that was just a good excuse to talk about signals. <laughs> Let me go ahead and hop into Firefox because... Um, like DWM and ST, DWM blocks is not available in the, uh, the Arch repositories. Oh god, I hate Firefox. <sighs> DWM blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and put this inside configs. And I like to put it inside DWM. Alright, let me remove config.h with that tilde after it. Yeah, this is the one we want. Get clone DWM blocks. And there's not much of a readme here, uh, which I heard a little about recently. But, um, and then I like to change DWM blocks to blocks. That way, when I'm in my home directory, I can just do cd configs DWM slash blocks, which just sounds a little nicer to me. So if we take a look inside of blocks def.h, um, you'll see that a lot of the comments are actually in here. So modify this file to change what commands go in your status bar, uh, and then you just recompile it. So you can see by default, we've got icons, commands, update intervals, and update signals. Um, in this case, the, the, the so-called icon is just the label mem, uh, and then it's going to run this command. So one thing I'll recommend is that you actually put these commands in scripts. Because, like DWM, you're going to have to recompile DWM blocks to um, uh, get the updates to take effect. So it's nice if you go ahead and put you p just put the path to a script in this spot. That way you don't have to recompile every time. You can just change the script directly. Uh, and then update interval is going to be 30 seconds. So uh, the default is going to be checking your available memory every 30 seconds. And if you just leave update signal at zero, uh, that just doesn't associate any signal with it. Then the other thing is the date, uh, which we probably are going to want as well. So it's pretty straightforward here overall. I'm a little bit curious actually to check out... Um, actually, let's go ahead and pull this up in Emacs. Sorry for the jarring... Great. I, mean, I think my mouse keeps like going to the other monitor. And it messes up my full screen stuff. So. Okay, well, this is a little annoying. Okay, my VM may be uh, destroyed or something. Send key. Well, I do like to do debugging on the channel. So, uh, what's this? 
Virtual? What's going on? <laughs> uh, alright. Well, oh! Okay, we're back. I have no idea what just happened. Okay, <sighs> configs, dwm slash blocks, blocks.def. No, no. Alright, here we go. So, yeah, I think we're gonna go. Let's take a look at the make file, actually. Let's see what it's gonna do. Does it ever copy it for us? Copy blocks.f. Yeah, okay, blocks.h. But I usually like to copy it myself. Alright, I'm done with Firefox. Probably Firefox that was causing trouble. Oh my god, I bet, I bet it used all my memory. Um, yeah, configs, dwm blocks. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to hop into Durad real quick. And I'm going to copy this to blocks.h. And then that's the one we're actually going to edit. Well, for now, I guess we may as well uh, just let it go. Yeah, let's do sudo make install return status to find what I use. Okay, cool. Alright, so you see that it's not running. What we need to actually do to have it to have it start is we're gonna run DWM blocks ampersand to send it to the background. And we also need to disown it. That way when I close my terminal it doesn't uh, stop immediately. Great. Alright so that's actually pretty good. I will pick a different date format. So let's go ahead and check out man date. Um, and yeah. What do I have on my computer? Well, we'll just uh, we'll do it live. Let's go through this. So we definitely want to have the. I think I usually put the, the day first. So let's go percent A. So Thursday. I think I like. What's month? I like percent M Thursday June. Oh uh, no, I do like the uh, the month like that. Twenty seventh, that's good. Day of month. Okay, twenty seventh. Delete this A. What is this? Ooh. No, we'll do percent H, hour, minute, colon. Uh, yeah, I actually don't like to do seconds. And I will throw a space in here just to keep it all lined up. Okay. That's looking good. Do we want to do anything else? I think the memory is fine. Sometimes I do like to put. Alright, let's do. I don't, probably don't have the right thing for this. Yeah, I don't have a proper font for this, but what I hit there is Control X8 Enter, uh, which lets you insert a character in Emacs, which I found out about pretty recently. So let's actually install. Uh, I don't remember. Actually, I, I don't know the, the right font. So this will do for now. So let's see this again. Make, make install. And now we're going to actually want to kill the DWM blocks that's running. So just in case there's more than one, I'll kill all DWM blocks. And then I'll hit Control R to start DWM blocks again. All right, you can see now that we have a big space in front of it. <laughs> all right, call it that. Print, dot three, goodness. <laughs> I'm just trying to see what's going on in this one. So print dollar three. Ah. Backslash. Okay, we're escaping the double quote. Then a slash. Oh, 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 oh. I see. Next, is there, do I see? Why are we putting a quote there?
Oh, 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 yes. Okay, so what's going on here is we're just doing, he's just doing string concatenation and awk by putting the strings next to each other. So $3 is going to evaluate to uh, this 223 megabytes. Uh, and then he's just trying to put, yeah, he's trying to put this inside the string. Um, so honestly, what I'd probably do here is I'd use printf instead. And inside of this, I would put percent %s slash percent %s. And then we'll do uh, comma dollar three comma dollar two, and hopefully I don't mess this up uh, disastrously. But I also want I want a space here is the whole reason I would do that. All right, let's try that again. Let's kill all, sudo make clean install, and then let's run it again. Oh, I put the space. Oh, I see. Okay, the icon is what needed the space. We got a warning. I wondered about that. Okay, it looks like I messed something up in the init file. I think this is supposed to look like this. Well, anyway, hopefully we fix this. So let's build it again. Kill all. There we go. Okay, so we fixed the spacing issue. Good. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of DW and blocks. Uh, the next thing, let's just go ahead and install PyCom. So that's what I'm gonna use in my compositor. Uh, screen key. All right, let's see if this issue I found has been taken care of. So I think not. Let's see. If I actually run screen key. Yes. So I actually reported this bug uh, to the emac to the uh, arch package people. Uh, if you're gonna install screen key, you also need to install dbus python <coughs> for screen key to work. So to get screen key working, okay, well this video is already quite long, so hopefully uh, that's good. We've now got a status bar set up. I think we fixed a bug in our Emacs config. I'll go add that to the description of the other video right now. Um, and then I'll see you guys next time. Next time we'll probably patch. Did we put a patch on ST already? No. Okay, my next video will be about patching the Suckless software because uh, that's how you can add additional functionality beyond what comes with everything. But anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time.